Hello, and welcome to Cloud On Air, live webinars from Google Cloud. We're hosting webinars every Tuesday. My name is Tanay Budzdev, and I work in our cloud customer engineering team as a security and compliance specialist. You can ask questions anytime on the platform, and we have Googlers on standby to answer them. So let me really start by thanking you all for your time and joining us. Also, since we're covering a decent amount of information in a short amount of time, I just want to remind everyone that everything that we go over today in this session um, is something that is going to be covered in greater detail on our, at our Google Cloud Security and Compliance website or webpage in the form of articles and or white papers. So in this session, a few of us will be talking about how a big cloud computing company really approaches things like security as a whole, compliance, sharing data securely, and working securely from anywhere, and what that really means for you. So I wanted to first start by focusing on some of the foundations. So let's get started. It really begins with a single question that every organization should be asking themselves. Do you have a comprehensive approach to security? Now, this is probably a question you've heard plenty of times. And I know that CEOs are often asked this uh, by their board of directors because they tell us all the time. Uh, so, and here's how we've learned to talk about it. So it really started with Google being born and raised in the cloud and has always run its services in a multi-tenant cloud environment for that time and moving forward. We're now fortunate enough to actually have seven global services with one billion users each. As a result, then, you can imagine, we're a pretty focused target for bad actors. So as you can imagine, also then, having to figure out security, privacy, and data compliance at such a large or global scale is something that we had to do quickly and effectively, and not just do it for the present time, but also future-proof it. The learnings we've had from these problems really have turned into the fundamental pillars uh, for how, our, how we design our, and secure our infrastructure, which happens to be the same infrastructure that our enterprise customers can and do use. So because of our relentless focus on protecting the user, we've learned and built systems in our infrastructure that now enable things such as what you're seeing on your screen. Now, as you can see, we're making some bold statements here. Well, how are we able to do these things? So it, the vision and the solution really starts and comes down to a single enterprise technology platform that automates many of today's security practices. And it frees IT teams to innovate and serve better in other areas of the enterprise. It's what we use at Google today, and it's how we're actually able to serve even you know, the seven Google businesses uh, with one billion customers each that we talked about, along with one of, much of the world's media and advertising businesses without suffering the kind of security breaches that typically put others in news headlines. Because it's a single platform, without the versions and the layers of different technology that create and the most security gaps, really, we have speed and scale that others simply just don't. Every machine is up to date. It's patched. It's always available and accounted for. And there's no planned downtime. And actually, the cool part is you can take advantage of this technology with a feature we call live migration, something that our customers that I talk to all the time are pretty excited about. Because the platform works with massive amounts of data, it's, it securely and safely manages that data with sophisticated encryption at rest and in transit. And because we believe that cloud extends to on-premise data centers as well as user devices, it really turns your employees from the greatest source of risk to really your frontline defenders. To get a little bit more into detail with, uh, with our approach, uh, take a look at this. We actually call this defense in depth. And the idea really is to approach uh, or to protect your organization by eliminating holes, gaps, and flaws at every layer, whether that be the infrastructure, the software, or the processes. I'll touch on a few of those with some examples uh, and from the bottom up. So let's get started. So to begin with, every layer is protected using custom-built hardware with no unnecessary parts. Google manufactures almost all of its own hardware, and any third party never sees the overall build process. Last year, we deployed and introduced a security chip called Titan. What Titan does, and it's because it's installed in every Google server, it really checks the, every machine for integrity every time before it boots up, or while it's booting up. And now, in that case, a server is not allowed to jump on the network. It's holding and processing zero data until its health has been established, and that's every single time. Wherever possible, we automate things. So we're relentlessly and repeatedly checking code for vulnerabilities before it's deployed. We automatically encrypt data at rest and in transit using on, you know, on our large and uh, fast global network that I was telling you earlier about. We maintain a system of employee permissions, and we keep all the machines uh, in the same state. 
We have a massive team of dedicated security um, engineers and scientists that are constantly testing the environment for vulnerabilities and researching patterns to figure out what future vulnerabilities or threats could look like so that we can protect Google well in advance. All right, so I've talked about our infrastructure, I've talked about our network, I've talked about our data management capabilities and our automation at scale, and not to mention, or not to forget, our incredible innovative security team. But our vision for the cloud does not really end here. We also include your on-premise data centers in our security vision. So we've developed things such as cloud identity, which can help you manage access and permissions on and off the cloud. With audit trails, you can actually stop bad actors and establish compliant policies. Kubernetes, which hopefully all of you have heard of by now, a pretty popular product nowadays. And it's something that is, is used for managing software containers inside our data center, inside your data center, or across both, if you like. And containers is really what makes possible the kind of system-wide automation of patches that we were talking about earlier. Now, they give IT teams better visibility into how software is used and enables them to innovate and inform others on things such as cost, performance, and customer product usage. You may know that Kubernetes is available on other platforms as well. Well, that's because when it was being developed at Google, we open sourced it so that we could actually make something as innovative and as secure as this available to the rest uh, of the community uh, and the industry. Uh, kind of much like the way we did with Chrome, which is the most secure browser. So Istio, which is, again, an open source platform uh, that Google contributes to and, and has uh, done a lot of work with, and provides a uniform way to connect, manage, and secure microservices. So a lot of customers I talk to that are doing containerization love Istio, and they typically go hand in hand together. And then lastly, one of the things that's also popular with some of the customers I talk to, especially when they're focused on uh, on-premise uh, to begin with, is Apigee, which is really what, something that enables you to, to do more with your data. You can securely um, manage API calls with other databases, whether it's your own or another one, uh, depending on your strategic need. So most of our customers really start here and use Apigee extensively at first uh, to connect their on-premise systems and applications with Google Cloud. So as you can see on, on most of these things we're talking about is open source transparency and interoperability is a core value at Google Cloud. While we think our technology, such as Google Kubernetes Engine, is a really effective way to go, we're still big believers in portability. So uh, we believe that you should take your workloads with you if you choose to move. And our customers should be able to really move uh, amongst multiple cloud providers if they choose to, uh, or do it all together and, uh, in a hybrid environment, uh, and choose providers that give you, really give you the best and most innovative services. So all this really brings us down to some of the last thoughts I wanted to leave you with, which is our cloud trust principles. There's about five of them that I want to talk to you about before I pass the mic on to our next speaker. So let's begin with the first one. Know that your security comes first in everything that we do. Secondly, you control what happens to your data every time. Third, know where Google stores your data and rely on it being available every single time you need it. Fourthly, depend on Google's independently verified security practices. And last but not least, trust that we'll never give any government entity backdoor access to your data or to any of our servers that are storing your data. So I know we've covered a lot of information in a short amount of time here about how Google approaches and secures our own infrastructure and what that means for you. But don't just take our word for it. We believe in earning your trust through transparency and not just through the technology we've been talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the mic on and give you, leave you in the capable hands of James Snow, who's going to talk to you about how Google Cloud approaches audits, compliance, and what that means for you. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Janae, and hello, everyone. I'm James Snow. I'm here to talk to you today about security and compliance on the Google Cloud Platform. Now, to start, the first question we often have is, what can Google do with data once it's been put onto our platform, otherwise known as scope of processing? The answer is very straightforward. Google can only use data on our platform to provide the service that you as a customer have requested. So we can only use the data per your instructions and we can use it for no other purpose. So this is outlined not only in our contracts, but it's also audited by third parties, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Next is intellectual property. Who owns the intellectual property for data that is either uploaded or generated on our platform? 
Again, a very simple answer. The customer has 100% of the IP rights while Google has none. Last but not least, especially relevant in regulated industry, is around data portability. So if you move data onto the Google Cloud Platform, can you easily move it off? And the answer is yes. At any given time, you can move your data on or off our platform without requiring assistance from Google, with no fines or fees, et cetera. And of course, this comes off in industry standard formats. You could think of Kubernetes, our, uh, our container orchestration platform, as the ultimate embodiment of this philosophy, where you can move an active workload from on-prem to Google's clouds to other clouds dynamically in order to meet uptime requirements. To pivot and talk about managing regulatory risk. So oftentimes working with regulated customers that could be anything from national regulation to healthcare to government to finance. There are lots of different regulatory risks that customers are exposed to. Now, if you were to think like a regulator, the questions that they're going to be asking is, how are you protecting your regulated data? Who owns that data? Where is it located and how is it being used? Last but not least, if the data is supposed to be deleted, how is that done securely and efficiently? Now at Google, we have a single cloud platform. So this actually makes it easier for a lot of regulated industry because we operate a baseline of security controls across our entire platform. So it's not one solution has one level of security or one product has one level of security. It applies across our entire platform. We already covered ownership and usage. The customer owns the data, and it can only be used per their instructions. Data location is configurable per product that we have on the Google Cloud Platform. At all times, it is going to be transparent, and customers will know where their data is at any given moment. Data deletion. So Google is a what we call a data processor. The customer is the data controller. If the data controller gives Google an instruction to delete data, we as the data controller will execute their instruction uh, faithfully and uh, thoroughly. So let's talk about how Google thinks about privacy and compliance and security. All of these topics are interrelated. Now, in a traditional IT system, this usually starts the other way around. They'll say, I need to process or protect credit card data, so I need to build a PCI DSS environment. Now, that's a starting point for many, but for Google, it's really reversed. We look at our entire platform and we say, what are the strongest security controls that we can put in place across our entire platform? Next, we'll look at the privacy controls, the management of the data, the access of the data, and being able to monitor that effectively. Last but not least, we'll look at the compliance frameworks that we can put on top of it. Because we have this uniform security, we can actually start looking at things like independent security and compliance certifications as applying across our platform and not for specific uh, solutions or projects. So let's talk about our independent third-party certifications. So please, the big difference I want to impart here is that we operate a single cloud environment. We have one global cloud. We do not have a German cloud or a healthcare cloud or a financial services cloud or even a gov cloud. We operate a single cloud infrastructure. And what that means is, again, not just having a single baseline, but having an audited baseline, again, against multiple standards by multiple auditors. So let's talk through uh, a few of the biggies. So we have the ISO certifications. This is an international family of standards. Starting with ISO 27001. We have 114 security controls looking at our platform. ISO 27017 is an evolution with cloud-specific security controls. ISO 27018 is the first cloud data privacy standard. So this is the third-party audit that's attesting that your data is only being used per your instruction and for no other purpose. If you're more of the report reading type of security professional, we have our SOC 1, SOC 2, and SOC 3 security reports. This is about 350 pages of security goodness that you can review and, of course, uh, match to your controls or your requirements. If you'd like to process credit card data, we have PCI DSS certification. Of course, we have the most recent certification, and we operate at the highest merchant level. So we can meet your requirements in terms of credit card processing. If you're a healthcare professional, we have HIPAA. We actually support the requirements under HIPAA, so we will enter into a BAA. We just recently attained our high trust certification focused on healthcare data. 
Last but not least, and this is a large differentiation for our platform, is FedRAMP authorization. So FedRAMP is the security standard that's used for protecting data at both the federal, state, and local levels. Now, on other platforms, they have very specific government clouds that meet these standards. At Google, we have a global platform. So all of our data centers and our services that are scoped under FedRAMP are all covered by these protections. And we make these same services, of course, available to all customers, not just government agencies. So if you're a bank or in your healthcare, your data is being protected at the same standard that we use for the US government. But it's not just FedRAMP. You have multiple audits, the FedRAMP audit, the ISO audits, the SOC audits, multiple checks, multiple times to ensure that your data is being protected uh, at the standards that have been promised. Now, these are the independent third-party certifications. We also have a lot of regulatory engagement. So being on that single cloud platform is very important because we have the exact same story that we can bring to all of the regulators globally across different industries. We're working with national banks. We're working with, with healthcare oversight authorities. We're working with privacy authorities in Europe. We're working with them not just to explain our platform and to uh, quantify and, and validate our contracts, but again, we want to have a consistent picture for uh, both compliance and security across multiple geographies. So if you're a multinational organization, you can have one solution that's gonna be able to protect all of your users rather than just uh, having something that is regional. All right, so speaking of something that is a national level and topical of late, uh, I'd like to talk about the GDPR. The GDPR is the EU General Data Protection Regulation. This affects and protects the personally identifiable information of European nationals. Basically, it puts in controls and restrictions on what can be done with their data, and of course, uh, it gives them rights to be protected and notified if there are things like data breaches or security incidents. Now, Google has been working very hard, and we are compliant with this regulation, both as a company and as a provider of services via our enterprise cloud. Now, this matters to most customers because oftentimes uh, most companies are actually interacting or collecting this type of information. But again, you do not need to make that differentiation. Because we operate as one cloud, we're protecting all data to the same level that the GDPR requires, not just a specific subset. So again, this is about making things easier for you. The GDPR is evolutionary, not revolutionary. For years, Google has been compliant with the EU Data Protection Directive, the regulation that came before the GDPR, and we've been working for years to become compliant with the GDPR as a cloud provider. Now, when I say it's evolutionary, it's evolutionary in a very positive term for both data subjects and for you as a customer. Under the old law, the Data Protection Directive, only you, the customer, were responsible for compliance. You're also responsible for paying all these fines. Under the GDPR, this is all changed. Under the GDPR, security and compliance are a shared responsibility between you and Google. For the areas that Google is responsible for, we're responsible for directly to the privacy authorities. If there is some sort of incident or problem, it's Google who will be held responsible and Google who will be paying the fine. We're here to partner with you to help mitigate that risk and, of course, protect your information. Okay, I think that's all for today. I hope you learned a lot today about what you need to know about staying compliant, and thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Mike Aiello. I'm the Director of Product Management for Cloud Security. I'm here today to talk about securing and sharing your data. So as a Chief Security Officer, Chief Information Officer, Chief Risk Officer, you need to manage risks differently when you move to Google Cloud. This is where most of your new analysis and benefit of moving to the cloud is going to come from, but this drives changes in enterprise culture, in audit, governance, administrative control. And in order to manage these risks, you need to think hard about what the root cause of most of the risks are. And we find it comes from three sources. Poor data management practices, unauthorized access control and access control setup, and unencrypted data on the cloud. At Google, we're proud to say that we have an array of solutions with addressing these concerns that are part of the shared responsibility between the user of Google Cloud and Google Cloud itself. So let's go through them. 
First, we want to talk about the exceptional opportunity for customer understanding, product design, manufacturing, planning. There's a whole bunch of benefits that you get from moving to cloud. And the, the core of that is the analytics workflow that comes from, uh, from coming from cloud. But this also means that you have more data in more places. Previously, it was only on-prem. Now it's on-prem and in cloud and across uh, potentially multiple clouds. And a big part of this, the big part of the reason you do this is because you want to enable data sharing. The reality is, in order to get real value out of cloud, you need to move sensitive information or private information to cloud or anonymized versions of private information in cloud. One of the examples that we have is we worked with a healthcare customer who took more than two years to simply identify and discover the private and sensitive information that they had in their enterprise before they uh, began their adoption of cloud. Uh, at Google, we've invested deeply in machine learning and artificial intelligence to create tools and products that make moving to cloud easier and make the data discovery and data anonymization aspects easier. What you're seeing here is a output of one of our products called the Data Loss Prevention API, which has automatically discovered sensitive information in a file that was uh, passed through the API and automatically in place format preserving, redacted that information. So you can see that the phone numbers have been redacted except for the first three digits, and email addresses and social security numbers have been redacted. This makes it much easier to tell the story of securely operating analytics environments in the cloud because you can do so on anonymized and redacted data. We're also deeply invested in making sure that you have transparency into when a Googler accesses your data. So we've invested in a product called Access Transparency, which you can enable which gives you a notification whenever a Googler accesses your data. For example, if you send in a support ticket asking for help with a specific storage bucket that you have. So we're excited about having tools and products that help you discover and classify your information, and additionally giving you enhanced transparency when you keep sensitive information in Google Cloud. Now let's talk about access control. The idea that people should access what they need for their jobs and nothing else. It's a, it's a good fundamental principle of security. At its core, it's defining who, can do what on which resource. So if you think about who, that's the identity of the user, can do what, that's the action on which resource. This is the resource within the cloud, storage, process, et cetera. We have two key principles that we'd like to uh, communicate about this. First is establish the most granular access policies you can. It's the principle of least privilege, and we provide an identity access management solution to do this. And then second is employ multi-factor authentication to protect against phishing. We found that this reduces one of the most common uh, attack vectors that we see in 2018 significantly. Finally, let's talk about securing the bits, encryption. 59% of companies today lack an enterprise-wide encryption strategy. That's not good. There's many companies out there that don't have a story they can tell their board about data being encrypted by default across the entire enterprise. You'll be happy to know that as you move your data to Google Cloud, we take care of that. We encrypt the data by default. We encrypt it with the same processes and procedures we use to encrypt data across Google. And we've spent a long time working on these processes and procedures. We have a core principle that you should have control of the keys that encrypt your data if you so choose. And we provide a range of management options for those keys. So by default, like I mentioned, your data is encrypted by REST with keys that Google manages. At the other extreme is you can bring your own encryption keys. This gives you the maximum control. You're providing the key material which encrypts your data. And in the middle, we provide a customer managed encryption key option where we uh, generate the keys for you and you can control the uh, rotation and revocation periods around these keys. So in order to encrypt your data and secure your data, you need a range of options. From a fundamental perspective, the data is encrypted by default at Google. And we can help you in each of these choices that you have as you talk about encryption with your customer base, with your board, and with Google. And we see every permutation of encryption key management that folks can think of. Uh, folks have come to us and talked about how they want encryption to work. And we believe our product suite solves the vast majority of these use cases. And if it doesn't solve all of them, please come back uh, and talk to our team. And we will, uh, we will work to make the products better. So uh, with that, I wanted to say thank you. Uh, and I want to hand it over to Rena, who's going to talk about how to work securely from anywhere. Thank you, Michael. And hello, everyone. I am Rena Nedkarni, product management lead on the G Suite team. G Suite is Google's productivity suite. It includes all of the products that you're familiar with, like Gmail, Calendar, Google Drive, docs and editors with extra controls for enterprise users and enterprise admins. My focus today is primarily on security 
and how to make it simple. You can have all the security tools in the world, but they're only useful if you actually deploy them. We want to make security simple, both for the IT admins as well as for the enterprise end users. So what can we do to make security easy to use? Is it possible to change the paradigm from the old world where employees are the greatest source of vulnerability, the most mistrusted area, to switching it around and making them the front line of defense? At Google, we have a history of making difficult things simple to use. Think about quality search results. That's something that's very complex, has a lot of sophisticated technology behind the scenes, but we've made it really simple for our end users. Security is no exception. To many, this might seem counterintuitive. Security implies levers, dials, lots of rules and engines. Easy implies exactly the opposite. Making security easy might scare some people, but I would argue that the failure to not achieve this goal is far worse because then security gets in your way and people are not really using the security tools we make available. So with great urgency, we're driving towards the world that solves this problem. Let's think about the way in which many people still work today. Passwords being managed across different systems. Some systems require passwords that have 12 characters. Others want a mix of upper and lower characters. Some require special characters. And many a times, people simply pick passwords, write them on a post-it, stick them in their cube or on their screen. Many people are still using thumb drives for data portability. And countless hours are being spent in attending trainings and developing trainings around compliance. The trainings that I like to call, thou shall not do X, Y, or Z. So let's start to think about how we get control over all these issues and how we can solve these problems by knowing the risks. To understand the landscape a little bit better, let's look at what's been happening in the world of data breaches and the world of ransomware. There has been a 15x increase in ransomware losses between the last 2015 to 2017, last couple of years. Employees are more vulnerable than ever. 90% of all reported breaches were caused by unintentional employee negligence. These bad actors prey on your vulnerable employees. Data breaches, when compounded over time, are estimated to have a collective cost of $2.1 trillion by 2019. So it's really easy to understand why we need solutions that not only help the IT admins, but also empower the enterprise end users. So now, let's see how a cloud native solution can help. In security, scale matters. It's almost like we constantly see these new attacks and flaws from using old methods and outdated patches. This is because we are running a network that carries one fourth of the internet traffic. We stop more than anyone else and are uniquely equipped to address them all. Did you know that every minute, Gmail stops 10 million spam and malicious emails from reaching our end users? We've also recently added advanced spoofing protections in Gmail, we've added Gmail Confidential, which allows you to set message expiration, revoke sent messages, and also limit attachment downloads and forwarding to keep your confidential data safe. We talked a little bit about scale. The scale that we have allows us to apply advanced AI and ML techniques to the domain of security. As you know, machine learning models scale better based on the data that you have to train these models on. Our machine learning models train on data generated from seven products that have over a billion monthly active users. Secondly, when you think about attacks like DDoS attacks, you want to have a bandwidth, a high bandwidth network. We have the network that allows you to watch 500,000 YouTube videos in high definition simultaneously. And then think about device protections. We protect 3 billion devices from URLs 
with malicious content every day. And with Google, this scale and security is now available to protect you, your corporation, and your employees and their data. So let's talk about some specific features that we have to be able to make your employees less vulnerable and more powerful. The first, I want to start with a statistic, zero. Zero is the number of account hijackings we have seen detected or reported from our customers ever since they have deployed security keys. So this is a very simple and very important security protection that you can use for your organizations. Second, G Suite data loss prevention. Both in Gmail and in Google Drive, at scale, we can stop important data from being exfiltrated outside your organizations. And we make it really simple for you to set up these rules, the DLP rules. We have over 50 predefined content types that cover confidential data across the world so that you can create very easily those advanced DLP rules. But we also allow you to create custom rules so that you can protect data. Let's say that you have a confidential project name and you want to make certain that the data related to this project never goes outside of your organization. You can set up a DLP rule to protect that. And you can take a variety of different actions. For example, you can quarantine that email from going out. You can warn the user, or you can do both. And lastly, we now have Security Center for G Suite. What Security Center for G Suite does is that, first of all, it has a set of dashboards that consolidates data from across the organization, things like login audit, mobile device management alerts, as well as suspicious drive activity all in one place. So as an admin, you can come in and get a single view of the security posture of your organization. Second, we have consolidated all the security settings for your organization in one place, and we show you Google recommended best practices of what those settings should be to best protect your organization. So what you really see is a health check of your organization's security settings all the settings in one place, what Google recommends are the best practices, as well as what settings you have and where you're deviating from our best practices. This has been really useful for our IT admins to get at a glance in one view. And then finally, we have created an investigation tool that allows you to very quickly take actions. This is because when a malicious email enters into your organization, the time that you have to protect your data requires you to act very quickly. So what we do is we allow the admins to very quickly navigate across different corpuses of data from mobile logins into suspicious drive activities and narrow down the data that you're seeing and very quickly take actions, bulk actions like deleting emails. Now clearly this is a very powerful capability and so we want to make sure that it's available only to the super admins with very delegated and privileged access. So we talked about three things. First, how you can protect your organization by deploying security keys. Second, how you can proactively set up DLP rules to better protect your organization's data. And finally, how G Suite Security Center helps your organization get one-stop view of the security posture and very quickly act upon malicious incidences. With that, I want to thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this talk and we'll end with some insights from one of our customers, the city of Los Angeles. I'd like to now hand it over to Ted Ross, who is their general manager and CIO. Thank you. My name is Ted Ross, and I'm Chief Information Officer at the City of Los Angeles. As the IT department for the second largest city in the United States, we have plenty of challenges. We're relied upon by many other city departments. That includes LA Police Department, libraries, recreation and parks, building and safety, planning, and many others. In the beginning, people thought of the cloud as being something a little more risky. 
because your data is no longer on-premise, something that you can touch. But we're really way past that point. Security in cloud is exponentially better than what most organizations can provide on-premise. In 2018, we moved our financial system into the cloud, which means hundreds of thousands of transactions every year are running out of the cloud. By moving data up into the cloud, not only do we get a low-cost, pay-as-you-go infrastructure that's secure and resilient, but we also get access to great machine learning and artificial intelligence tools that allow us to gain much more insight into our operations, how we run our city, the decisions that we make, and we can do so with powerful tools that we wouldn't be able to access within our data center. In 2017, we had a very unique situation. Two multi-alarm fires occurring in Los Angeles at the same time. We had to get communications out to over 150,000 residents who had to be evacuated. So while we did it with all the traditional means of news stories and radio reports, etc., we were missing a digital solution. We leveraged Google Maps to very quickly put together layers, very simple layers, to communicate where the fire evacuations were. The use of Google Maps for fire evacuation was so effective that we actually had over 3 million views within 36 hours. And honestly, you will not find such a high level of consumption for almost anything government does. We feel that cloud infrastructure is absolutely the way of the future. It allows us to deliver great technology that's robust, it's resilient to disasters, and it scales at internet scale. We find G Suite tools to be an extremely effective way of empowering our employees. Here's a service and here's a tool that makes our employees much more productive. Whether they're sharing documents or sharing spreadsheets, sharing information, their ability to do this so quickly and so efficiently really is much more cost effective for the taxpayer. For an organization our size, lightweight tools like Google's gives us tremendous opportunities. Honestly, the more we move into the cloud, the more we see the benefits from a resiliency perspective, from a security perspective, and just from an accessibility perspective.